making albums. <laughs> I love doing it. I love having a fresh new set of songs to play. I had sung a little bit in my high school choir, but nothing serious. When I got to college, I joined my chamber choir and I joined an acapella group and I started teaching myself guitar. And so I was about 20, 19 to 20 years old at this point. And I really was still so afraid to sing for people, but I slowly got less and less afraid. And um, once I got through college, I went on to American Idol, the season 11 of American Idol, and I made it to the top 24. Once that was all over, I moved home with my parents and I started just writing as much as I could. But American Idol really inspired me to, to, to really go for it. So yeah, eventually I released my first EP after just kind of like catching up, you know, learning how to be a writer, a guitarist, a performer. And that's, yeah, my journey kind of started in my early 20s. It was good because I learned... I learned a lot about myself. I had to push myself and find my inner courage to keep going. And it was hard because it was just a little bit, how do I say, psychologically <laughs> tumultuous. So it was, they were purposely making it hard for us. Like the producers just, they wanted to push us and make us get up early and be exhausted and like kind of put us on the spot or like have the camera in our face when we're crying. It was kind of like traumatizing at times. And I just kind of knew that like it wasn't really about the music. It was about TV. I met so many amazing people and I don't regret doing it. I just, I don't think I'd want to do a reality show like that again. It just messes with your head a little bit. It's a lot to be put in front of like a million people when you've hardly even like performed. Like for me, it was kind of like, whoa, <laughs> it, I'm really glad I did it. And then I got finally kicked off the show in March of 2012. After American Idol, I really wanted to be a professional in music and I wanted to be a songwriter. I wanted to be a performer, but I didn't really know that until after I was on the show and I, I saw that I could handle the situations of extreme stress. <laughs> I was okay. It just kind of showed me that I have a lot to say, and this is just what I want to do with my life. My album, Through the Blue, in 2015, I made that in Portland with a producer friend of mine, and with that EP, I built my very first band. So I pretty much just word of mouth, I reached out on Facebook, I found some players, learned the songs that I'd already recorded on my album. And that became my home Portland band for quite a few years. We ended up making another EP called When You Lit the Sky a few years later, and like a single as well called Feel the Water. That lasted like three or four years of having that band. We did like one small tour through California. Then I started to do a lot of solo work, a lot of solo opening for other bands and touring across the country. While I was doing that, I was starting to write my debut like full length album, which was called Golden Days. I kind of built a new band in Portland for that and had many opportunities to go out and perform and open for people. I released that album in 2019 and that was a really fun process. I used a studio band and we recorded everything pretty much like live. Yeah, I really love that record. But this last record, a lot of these songs I wrote during the pandemic or before the pandemic, I worked with a producer in Portland and we just had such a good time. I collaborated with my current bandmates on it and him and we just kind of experimented with all different kinds of sounds and I wanted to make it sound kind of vintagey and you know have some synths and just have it sound a little bit more unique than my other recorded stuff. This album was definitely one of the most fun albums for me to make and it's crazy, you know, I, this is, I guess, actively making music and pursuing music for about 10 years now. So 10 years later, I've got this, my, you know, my fifth, I guess, studio album. I forgot to mention one other album that I made though. 
I made an album called London Sessions, and that was, I recorded it in London right before I released my album Golden Days. It's a totally live solo performance of a bunch of songs from different albums of mine, but it was recorded at Abbey Road Studios in 2021, January. Things were loosening up a little bit, so I was in the studio a lot. I was able to start, like, really making it in 2021. I recorded Goner in Portland, only Portland. Two of them, my bass player and my guitarist, played a lot on the album. I didn't really have a solid drummer at the time, so I used um, a drummer my producer recommended, but he was great. So it was kind of like really mainly five of us, two of my original bandmates that really made the album. What the album was going to be about until I really looked at my collection of songs. Goner kind of ended up being a lot about not giving up on yourself, encouraging other people not to give up on themselves. For myself, it's really a cry to be more present in my life, more grateful, more confident in myself, more self-love, just more bravery. And my hope in sharing that sentiment is that other people will feel encouraged to to like listen to themselves and how can they honor themselves. So that's kind of the theme behind the album. But all my songs are about something different, but they both carry dark and light elements to them. There's always a positive spin, in a way, on a really hard topic. But that's how I like to write. It takes me a while to write songs because of that. The cover of Goner, you know, it's me kind of in like a power pose, but I'm kind of also looking off to the side. So I felt like that photo represented me being in my power and my bravery, but also kind of questioning myself at the same time, because I'm kind of just like existing in both worlds. And Goner can, has kind of a double meaning. You can kind of be like, well, I don't want to be a goner, meaning I don't want to waste this life. I don't want to give up on myself. I don't want to be miserable, basically. And the other way to look at it is someone said that they thought it meant fully diving into something. Like, oh, I'm a goner. Like, I'm a goner for music. That's not how I wrote it, thought about it, but other people are going to see things differently. I love... The way that higher turned out, I love the sound of it, the lushness of it, but I love playing Renegade. I love to perform that song. I think the reaction's been, been pretty good. I played a couple shows, and I played a Portland show and a Seattle show, and people seem to really enjoy it. Got a lot of good feedback. I think we're still working on making sure the album gets in front of people, and we're still pushing it. I'm trying to make the most of it. When you release an album, you work so hard on something for like years and then it's out and then you're like, okay. And then people are like, okay, what's next? And you're just like, what do you mean? <laughs> I think it was time for another album. I had a lot of songs on the back burner. I just love making albums. <laughs> I love doing it. I love having a fresh new set of songs to play. I like to challenge myself to always continue writing. So the best way to yourself out there these days is to be kind of consistently putting out work. Releasing an album or a small project can allow for more opportunities to play. Yeah, just give my fan base something new. I'm going on a two-month tour with Big Wild, the other band I play bass in, but as long as I'm working, I'm, I'm happy.